Good afternoon, welcome on location once again. Right. How about this place? Some of our new friends at the Double Tree Hilton, uh -huh. right here in downtown Youngstown. There's a restaurant that we know. Yeah. It's called Bistro it's 1907 by Mark Cancinetta. This place is beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it great? If you, you haven't had a out. chance to come down here and see the tree in downtown Youngstown, you have to come take a look. We're on the second floor. It's yes. open. To should, the public. We, should we get started? Yeah, we, we have we a should. lot to get oh, to today. There are over 800,000 professional piano players in the world. I didn't know that. Only about 1,000 of them get to be Steinway artists. And we have one of them. We're very lucky to have him. So I wanted to take a look at Joe Augustine, his career, and what makes him such a success. I'm proud to say. I was a full-time faculty member, and I'm also a jazz pianist, a recording artist, a composer, a Steinway artist, and I'm still at it. Still at it and still making amazing music at the age of 72. Joe Augustine has played for some of the most important people in the world, but he loves playing for the average Joe just as much. It's about me communicating to you. I want the music to be, I'll use the word again, relevant to you. I don't want anything to be sound so contrived. But it almost didn't happen that way. A football injury put Joe in a back brace when he was 15. And while walking past the band room at school, his life changed. I don't know why I gravitated to it, but the guy was playing. I went, man, I, I can't believe what this sounds like. I've never heard sounds like that. had to do was convince his parents this is what he wanted to do play the piano so I saved seventy eight dollars found an acrosonic spinet piano <laughs> in Austin town and my father and his two buddies get in a pickup truck and they go pick the piano up and I started to study and I paid for it myself because I wanted to do it and I'm telling you the truth my parents would have to ask me to not play because I, I couldn't leave it alone all this stuff came from him but to do this for a living, not an easy sell. In the 1960s, with old school parents that valued a steady job and hard work, especially his father. I thought he was gonna kill me. I really did. He says, are you mad? You had like a pension and insurance and all of the, you know, like beautiful things that come from security. I said, dad, each man's security is within his ears, okay? I wanna do this. And we fought tooth and nail, Mike, for a long time. So Joe quit the job working as an engineer at the steel mill and started playing and composing. Then in 1993, his first album, Sentimental Journey, came out. It took the audience by storm. This is what I live with. I had no idea, but I figured at this stage, just play you. What else, what choice do you have? Don't try to get cute, overplay, whatever. I did that. And right out of the gate, right out of the gate, it burned. Like it was selling. I said, what are you talking about? I said, yeah, we got like 80,000 pieces that sold in, in five weeks. I said, what are you, don't kid me with that. It won over critics, fans, and even his dad. And he saw the first royalty check. He said, oh, you got this from playing I said, yeah, this is a two-month check, Dad. He said, two months? That's four times what I earned last year. And I said, well, I, it was luck, and I just hit a home run. The next two CDs were home runs, too. More music led to more notoriety, and eventually a trip to New York to get a new Steinway piano. And that's when he really got noticed by none other than Henry Steinway himself. And that's when they asked me to sign on the dotted line and become one of their artists. And it was a no-brainer, right? Yeah, I, not to be overly emotional, Mike, I, when they asked me that question, I said, uh, excuse me. I walked outside, shut the door, leaned up against the wall and cried like a little kid. I couldn't believe, one, I was worthy, and two, they were actually gonna do this for me. 
How is this possible? You know, I'm this little guy who's living in Warren, Ohio now from Girard, Ohio. That can't be. More albums followed, 19 in total, concerts around the world, and yet you can still see him play locally at Gatsby's every Wednesday in Warren. The same great music, but in that unmistakable artistic Joe Augustine style. When I sit down to play something, if you ask me to play it exactly the same way twice, we're in deep trouble, because I can't. I just do what I do. I know what I hear. I know the form of the music, the melody of the music, the harmony of the music, the rhythm of the music, and I just take it from there. So Joe keeps playing every morning. He's right here in his living room creating, and he says learning, something that just needs to be done. We will never have it all. Nothing ever replaces practice. You cannot delegate practice to your secretary. But don't, don't view it as work. View it as a beautiful exploration within yourself. And continue to do it day after day and find the levity in every note. I hear that stuff, but I keep trying to learn more and more all the time. And it speaks to me. It speaks to me, it talks to me. I think it picked me. I didn't pick it, it picked me. Well, he he's is, the best. He is the best, he's the and best. he's such a great friend of ours. We're lucky that, you know, he's here in the Valley. Yeah, and he's got all those albums, I'm sure more to come. Gets up every morning and gets on that piano and starts playing it. You know what we should do? We should move a piano in here and have him play here. Oh, that would be good, that we would be good. That. Thank you, Joe, for letting us come bother you at your house. Thank you, Joe. All right, when we come back, we're going to the kitchen. Yes, we are. Oh my gosh, Mark Hansen, what can he not do? Right. He can do everything. And he has help this time, too. You'll see it after the break. Let the holiday spirit make you feel like a kid in a candy store. Daffin's Candies is the place to treat the entire family to the best chocolate and sweet treats anyone could ask for. Be sure to visit Daffin's Sharon location every Saturday between now and Christmas and take a photo with Santa. Be sure to look at the Hallmark Gold Crown gift items too. Every day and every holiday is sweeter thanks to Daffin's Candies. Visit Daffin's.com for store locations and holiday hours. She would always say, honey, I, you snore so loud, I, I can't believe how loud you snore. And I'm like, what? And he claims I quit breathing. I've tried four different masks to make it work, and I just can't do it. I'll and I'll be honest with you, I did off. not know what REM sleep felt like, like before the appliance. I really did not. I, it, I never had that deep of a sleep before. Test Kitchen wow. for a special holiday version. It is. Yeah. Why don't you introduce our guest, Mark? Well, Hi. Amanda, Hi. how are you? Amanda's back. Pastry Amanda chef to the, the pastry stars. chef for Bistro 19 S7. Mm -hmm. Mother of Jack, who is wandering around somewhere. Yeah, we have right? a little one. And, hus and wife to Chucky. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and well, the reason is, oh, wow. we're going to make Christmas cookies today. Five oh different God. kinds. Why don't you go through the kinds we're going to make? All right, so we're going to do uh, lemon thyme pizzelles. Mm -hmm. We're going to do chocolate pistachio orange zested biscotti. Uh -huh. We're going to do the famous um, 
clothespins, yes. but everyone has at Christmas time. Yes. Right. We're going to do um, cannolis, right. like a cannoli filling, and then we're going to do um, black cherry almond thumbprints. Yes. So this isn't a traditional Christmas. This is more of an Italian, Italian Christmas. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is what I, my first Christmas cookie was a pizzelle. Okay. My great grandmother, Rosanna, who never spoke a word of English, uh -huh. she's like, just Marco, Marco, Marco. And that was your job. That was my job. You yeah. know, so. Mine too. At my house, yeah, there were two jobs. Either grate the giant wheel of Parmesan cheese that Grandpa nice. got in Amish country for four dollars, <laughs> or you were in charge of pizzelles. And so as we flipped, my brother and I, and I often got the pizzelles. So I'm going to well, work on the pizzelles. Today, today you're in charge of the pizzelles. Yeah, He's that's right. Be an expert. Now, these, these are, you. there's some things in, in baking these cookies uh, that take some sure. patience. Oh, okay. So in like doing the pizzelles, you got to yeah. sit there and wait a little bit. Yeah. But it's worth it in the end. Yeah. What was your What was your thing? Sugar cookies. They're not Sugar even really cookies. Italian at all. No, no. they're not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Well, all right. There I you cannot go. wait to see your skills. Right. <laughs> it's been a long time. Wait. Before we go, favorite Christmas cookie is. I would have to say the favorite Christmas cookie for me growing up was the Buckeye. Oh, and, uh, we never had those. Oh my God, we had them. Gosh, yeah. I would have loved somebody, them. Somebody made the Buckeyes and I've just loved them yeah. ever since. How about you? I had, my mom made a Christmas brownie. Huh? It was like layered with chocolate and cream cheese and some like little like, you know, sprinkles of chocolate chips to die for. She awesome. makes for my birthday. Does she still make them? She made, yeah, she uh, still makes them. And that's why we're so glad that she moved here. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? That's so the reason. Christmas brownies for everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I love it. Thanks I love for moving to Tom. How about you? Can't wait to see the brownies this Christmas. Love ya. Yeah. You, I was going to say, this, uh, the idea of doing an Italian version of a lot of these things, though, is the reason why, you know, Scott's family, when I moved to Youngstown, mm -hmm. that was huge. Oh, my and gosh. You introduced me to that, and so did you, and so mm -hmm. I can't wait to see It's just like the, the, the Youngstown cookie table yeah. at weddings. That's yeah. big. Yeah. It, everybody tries to outdo themselves. I know that. And <laughs> if, if somebody doesn't see their cookie out on the display, Play. They're very offended, so you have to make sure everybody's cookies, because yeah. everybody's so proud of their Christmas cookies, mm -hmm. their wedding cookies. It's mm -hmm. such a great heritage. I also get very upset when I go to a wedding and there's not a cookie table. Well, yeah. like, we're from Youngstown. The deal breaker. You gotta do that. Well, you no. better not the travel cookie. outside of state. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what'd you have? <laughs> Did you have a favorite yeah. cookie growing up? Um, a frosted sugar cookie. That, that was your and favorite. Then, and then the peanut butter. I thought that was your With job to make. Oh, oh, yeah. My job was always wrapping the foil off of the kisses and putting them in, you know. How many actually made it to the cookie? Like one third goes in the belly. <laughs> Since you said that one, I will tell you that my mom makes these orange cookies. They're about this big. They melt in your mouth, and there's some frosting on top. I, I don't know the name of them. They're just called orange cookies. Yeah. That's all I can. Yeah, orange. Orange. So they're literally yes. orange in color. No, they're mm -hmm. white in color, but they taste, taste like, like a little okay. light. So it's probably a butter cookie. Bit That's why it melts mm -hmm. so easily on your palate. It's, it, it's beyond that. It's even better than that. <laughs> so, so do you have to do this all the time? Yeah. I'm guessing yes. you have to bake for people all the time. We I thought do. we'd yeah. do the yes, baking she does. Yeah. for you today. So. I'm going to work on the pizzelles. Yes. Give me a tip here. Um, well, you want to always um, We're going to spray first, right? Yeah. Both sides or both just si one? Both sides. Okay. And make sure you, you know, yep, don't be spray tricky with it. So, okay. Amanda, when you go into the thought process of picking out a pizzelle iron, what do you like to talk about? Okay. Do you want Teflon? Do you like the old school like this? This is old school. This is grandma's, but this is new. We just uh -huh. got it. But no, that's way too much. Okay. You're going to want to. Maybe I should watch you. You're going to want to level it off first. <laughs> How do you know it's way too much? Well, is it going to go over the edge? It's like making a waffle and you get like the yeah. everywhere. You don't want don't that. Don't waste. No, you don't want that. Okay. Oh, so scrape it up on the mm -hmm. side. So just find a scoop that's like perfect for the size you need and okay. then you don't have to like play around with it. How do I know when this is done? So clip it mm -hmm. and then when it stops steaming. So it's roughly about 30 seconds. Ours has a light on it. This doesn't have the light. Well, nice. It's a light well, gone. Grandma's didn't have light. They had probably, you know. Grandma's but just knew. She's like old school. It's like they didn't have to measure. They just feel. knew. Yeah. So how do I get it now? Well, you're going to watch the steam. Yeah. And when the steam stops coming out. Yeah you're gonna know that it's done. Is and it then still... depending on the darkness that you want, like if you really want it dark, then keep it in a little longer, okay. but oh, see, some see, people no. don't. But you gotta remember also, once it stops time. cooking, yeah, it's gonna continue to get colored. Take it off, see, look at that. Oh, wow. And then you wow. can use the knife. Wow. Can use, so this is old school. Yeah. This isn't ready yet, I don't think. No, it's good. Can I get it's good. Okay. There you yeah. go. Just All right, just be gentle. Yep. Okay, move on to the next cookie then. I got this, I got this, you guys. That's the biscotti. Huh? I mean, that's the, a pizza. Yes. Look at how perfect that is. It's not what? big enough. We should have put more Ooh, dough wait. in there. Okay, we'll get <laughs> this one. All right, this, so is this one we're making the biscotti. Just and my mom is a big fan yes. of the biscotti in general. So, do we go wet dry here, Amanda? Yeah, we'll wet ingredients okay, so with dry what we're ingredients? Do, yeah, we're going to put, um, we're going to start with the sugar okay. and the oil. The oil, sugar this one's oil. olive oil. Usually you could use butter, but I like to use olive oil. Okay. That's so, it's just a blend of olive oil and canola. And then, so then you're going to start the mixer. And this is you're just gonna quickly combine it. So we're just gonna turn it on real quick. And then from there we're gonna add our eggs. Okay. 
Now, Amanda, do you have to have a stand mixer to use this, or can you use the old-fashioned one like Grandma had? Yeah, you could use the old-fashioned. Okay, absolutely. okay. And then you're going to want to do this. Do we have a microplane around here? We do. Oh, right here behind you. A microplane. So you're going to want to zest the orange. Oh, yeah. Try to get the sticker in there, too, if you can do <laughs> Don't it. Don't put the sticker in there. Okay. That. I'm zesting it. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So. And just flip it over and, and put the zest in there. Absolutely. Okay. Just like that. Can I flip it? Oh, yeah, it goes. Yeah, that's good. Um, you're gonna want to do oh, half more. half of an orange. Okay. And oh, then goodness. while you're doing that, I'm just gonna scrape the sides down. So we get everything in. And while you're doing that, I'm going to roll the clothes, out the puff pastry the, yes, for the clothespins, correct? Yes. And you can buy this at the store instead of making it yourself because it's a very long, involved process. So we're just going to roll this out. Let it come to room temperature. Roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thick, correct? Yes. And I'm rolling it out on a great piece of uh, baking equipment. It's called a Silpat sheet. And this is non-stick. You can use it to bake your cookies with. Um, it, it just makes life so much easier. You don't have to butter your pans anymore or anything like that. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay, enough? Yeah. Hey, Mark, look at you. Look yeah. at these cookies yeah. And this is a French rolling pin, one of my favorite rolling pins because it's all one piece. You don't have any chance of any wet ingredients get inside of the dowels yes. and, and creating some kind of bacterial growth. Okay, so you're so going to turn it back on to mix it up. And then from there, we're going to add the um, dry ingredients. So you're going to add your flour. Okay. So Amanda, how thick am I going to cut these, these strips? Um, about like... Quarter inch? That, yeah, that's perfect. Quarter inch, perfect. And then, and then going to add your we're going to buy the dowels at either a hardware store, your favorite bakery outlet, and these are already pre-seasoned. When I say pre-seasoned, they're already so they're like non-stick. Yes. Perfect. And then we're going to add this. Open it up. Boom. Yeah. And then you're going to want to add your um, pistachios a little bit at a time, maybe, or yeah. all, all at once. A little bit at a time is fine. Well, Mark knows you know, we, we, have, we have a thing with scallions, so, yeah. You got about 30 seconds, you guys. 30 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to take the dowel, I'm going to take the dough, okay. and I'm just going to gently wrap the dough around the dowel to create that classic clothespin. And I don't know if I'm, I'm doing this quite as well as you, Amanda, but I'm going to give it heck. And I'm just going to wet the edge of it. You are. Right there. Right there. And then we're going to bake this how, Amanda? We're going to put it on, well, you can put it on your soap pad and you can show them just like that. Seam side down. Seam side down. Seam side down. And then you're going to bake it at 350 for about eight minutes. And everybody, welcome Jack to the set. Jack's Hi, Jack. Jack. Jack is here. Make Hi, Jack. Christmas Merry Christmas. He's had a little snow cone, so his face is a little warm. That's all right. <laughs> kind of like we, mom's cookies. We, 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 all right, when we come back, <laughs> we will be back and have more from Pesto's Test Kitchen. Nice job, you guys. All right. All right. Keep working. Keep trying. Back to my roots, back in front of the Patel for the next hour and a half. I tell you what, Michael, you were very, very good at that. You were doing great on the biscottis. You're not the biggest fan of those. No, I know. No, but I don't right. like coffee because I don't like to. That's, I would if I, if I like coffee, I would. So. You want to go roller skating? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's coming up, right? I'm not very good at it. Does Kelly get on skates but too? Kelly Warren is very good at it. Come on. And if she can't sell a house, well, she can sell a, a skating the, rink too. She'll be in the roller derby. Be right back. Hi, this is Elfie in the Metro Monthly Elf. I'm here to tell you about all the cool stuff you'll find at the Metro Monthly store. We have hoodies and sweatshirts and clothing for Dad. We have posters and aprons and messenger bags. We have boots now, I door, plus t-shirts and caps. We have frame prints of downtown, plus note cards and maps. We have big sizes, small sizes, and plus sizes, too. We have cool stuff for Grandma and cool stuff for you. So stop by today, and please don't delay. Our workshop is humming. The store's up and running. We're here for this season, your holiday store. So shop Metro Monthly for all this and more. Baby, you got some big feet. Where do you get shoes for those feet? I buy them at Ryers, of course. They have all sizes, even for me. They're always tax-free and located in beautiful downtown Sharon. Now through December 26th, Steel Valley Lifts is thrilled to offer you $1,000 off any of our lifts, including our backyard buddies. Built with pride in Warren, Ohio, by the people you trust for over 30 years. 
Call us now or visit us at steelvalleylifts.com to order online. With taking the kids to soccer practice, piano lessons, and everything else, I'm lucky if I get to fit in a workout. But staying fit is important, not just your body, but your teeth as well. The professionals at Pristine Dental provide affordable dental care for your entire family. From routine cleanings to cosmetic dentistry, Pristine Dental has got you covered. Plus, they have transparent pricing and membership plans that directly benefit you, not the big insurance companies. Visit pristinedentalpros.com to learn more and book your free consultation today. Your smile will say it all. From the beginning, it's been like hard work, all me, trying to get this done, trying to get products out there, and coming up with different ideas. You know, each, every single product has a story behind it, and every story is because they were made to help somebody. Rolling with my homies. Oh, Cal, home advantage on location. Not just for homes. This is an this is an interesting setup we're doing today, yes. huh? Yes. We are roller skating. We're and, like grannies. You, right? But that we have our walkers. <laughs> Safety first on this show. I know everybody's very nervous. Well, we haven't roller skated for 20 years, so at in our defense. At least. And I figure skated my entire life. And for the record, this is nothing like figure skating. Mm. This is difficult. Mm. Difficult to do, but fun to do, especially for the kids and a great property that yes. is for sale. You could buy all the fun. Yes. This is the Champion Roller Rink and this is the last remaining roller skating rink in Trumbull County. See? So, yes. You should, you should get it while you can. So when you're listing properties like this, obviously it's not a home. So when we're looking at buyers, they're looking at a million other things that people that are searching for their ideal place to live, some of those things are not on the list of right. a roller rink, right? <laughs> right? So how does that differentiate who the buyer is and what you're looking for and what they have to be, you know, paying attention to if they think that they want this? Sure. Because a lot of people could say they want it, but getting it is very different. Yeah. So we do commercial properties as well as residential. And with the commercial properties, you need a little bit of money down or collateral right. or business plans. You need something for the bank to say, yes, I'm going to loan those people some money. Mm -hmm. um, and so to do that, um, you would want to talk to a commercial lender and then you'd also want to talk to us and we can let you know if the property that we have listed is a good fit for you or we could help you find one that is. Wow. So with something like this, is everything included? Everything that you see here, all the slides and the video games, the tables, the chairs, is it all included or just something that you have to like yes. decide? Yes. So we're selling this two different ways. We're selling it one as the entire business, the Champion Roller Rink, I'm just, I'm um, roll with the parking lot. Keep rolling. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the equipment, the arcades, the skates, everything, um, the food services, all yeah. of it. Um, or we're selling just the building as a shell okay. and it comes with multiple parcels and it comes with a second business building um, and you've basically almost got the whole corner there of um, Mahoney Avenue and uh, the next street there so you've got the whole corner in Champion. Yeah this is a huge piece of property and look people are already filing in it's yes. you know open skate night so we should probably get out of their way okay. so that way they can have some real fun we'll and we have to uh, like hobble away on our skates right very very slowly <laughs> how can people get a hold of you anybody that wants to have any questions about this and so many of the great properties we share on the show anything real estate related you can give us a call or a text at 330-717-2689 or visit us online at kellysoldit.com easy to do not as easy to skate away <laughs> come on Kel. see you later everybody I was surprised to hear you say that ice skating and roller skating are so different. They're not the same. I needed the little walker thing. You're such an accomplished ice skater and then, whoa, that's crazy. And the, the rink itself, my gosh, if you're looking for an investment opportunity with yeah. a lot of fun, please don't hesitate to call her. Oh, that's fun. You know what, Michael? You always look like a million bucks. Oh, yeah. I know. Right? Not really, not really. And but when we have to make you look like $2 million, you know where I'm going to take you? Right uh, around the corner from here, probably, Yes, right? right to downtown Youngstown in the Commerce Building. Our friend John Lisko, he's been there almost 30 years, and there's a reason why. His attention to detail when it comes to the clothes that his customer wears is one thing, but the attention to detail when it comes to their lives, well, it speaks volumes. John Lisko knows what it takes to make a man look good. It's part of the fabric of his life. Everything, Lauren. You do it all. Yes, uh, we are the world's largest custom clothier. John worked his way up through the clothing industry. He set his sights high and eventually became part of the Tom James Clothing Company. 
his attention to detail and their attention to detail was a match to say the least. Okay, and rather than just a basic cuff, let's do the Palazzo cuff. I, I, I like that the immediately. Edge. Okay. The way this company makes suits begins sooner than you may think. We are totally vertically integrated, so I say we own everything from the sheep to the suit, in total control of every aspect of the operation. The process John goes through to create these custom fit designs is one that we couldn't just hear about, so why not invite a friend to experience what John Lisko brought to downtown Youngstown almost 30 years ago. With each measurement, each swatch of fabric, and each carefully asked question about how chef Mark Canzonetta feels comfortable in his clothing, John creates a garment that can take a great man and make him look as great as he should feel. We take about 45 different measurements, cut a pattern specifically for the client. We don't try to change their taste, but we have dialogue such as you and I are having to determine their taste. Do they want a trim fit? Do they want an easy fit? Do they want a regular fit? We also interview them on how are you using this garment? Where are you wearing it to? Uh, because price does not always drive what you're after. You know, maybe you need a Jeep and not a Ferrari. And the question still stands, how much does it cost? If you're thinking thousands, think again. Our custom-made suit shirts and ties, you can do at $7.99 for the three pieces, which is the equivalent to a price of a good off-the-rack suit. And chances are good, whatever John Lisko and the Tom James Clothing Company creates, hold on to it for years to come, since no one will forget it was made for you by a man who cares with his every fiber. Oh my goodness. The first time they love it, they're like, oh, I wish I knew you 20 years ago. That just happened the other day. <laughs> and, uh, and I have clients that have been clients of mine for 30 plus years who often will wear an older suit when I go to see them because I do go out to their, my clients' offices. And they're like, look, you made this suit. And we put the date on the pocket. You made this suit 12 years ago and it looks brand new. So forget about price. Let's talk about value. And talk about value, that is for sure. If you'd like to pay a visit to our friends over there at Tom James and John Lisko, yeah. just right around the corner on the Commerce Building, right in downtown Youngstown. Look them up on Instagram, Tom James Youngstown. You can take a look at all of the different kinds of things that they make. Attention to detail, right, Michael? Yeah, and really when like you that. when you look good, you just feel better, right? Yeah, you do, and yeah. Mark Canzanetta looked really look, good. I think he ordered like too. three more shirts or something <laughs> like that. All right, all right, let's keep it downtown. Uh, what is now a just a parking lot here was once a very bustling area wasn't it? Yes, it was. We're going to take a look at some of the uh, history when it comes to our theaters. And just because that one's not here doesn't mean that there aren't a lot more going on. Right. So. Our friend Sean Posey takes a look at the Palace Theater. of Wick Avenue and Commerce Street is relatively quiet today. A few parked cars and a few shrubs give very little indication of the structure that once stood here. But during the height of the Roaring Twenties, as downtown Youngstown reached its peak, the Keith Albee Theater, better known as the Palace, opened to capacity crowds. The Palace Theatre opened to wide acclaim in the spring of 1926. Its marble columns and staircase and 2,300 seats wowed audiences from opening night. The Palace also featured an exquisite art gallery on the mezzanine level. Tickets on opening night went for 35 cents for the balcony, 50 cents for the mezzanine, 75 cents for the orchestra, and one dollar for intimate loge seating. The Palace initially featured vaudeville performances. The finest acts played on the theater's massive stage, the largest ever built in the Mahoning Valley. The vast complex even included stalls large enough to wash horses, which occasionally appeared in the vaudeville shows. After the popularity of vaudeville declined in the 1930s, the Palace Theater hosted Broadway road shows and the nation's most popular big bands. 
Frank Sinatra played for frenzied crowds in 1941 and 1942. Glenn Miller, the most celebrated band leader of the era, brought down the house only weeks before he disbanded his orchestra and volunteered for the World War II effort. Vaughn Monroe, Hal McIntyre, Jimmy Dorsey, the Andrews Sisters, and countless others played the palace during the swing era from 1936 to the mid-1940s. Live performances continued throughout the 1950s, including famous burlesque dancer Gypsy Rose Lee and wholesome Patti Page, who sang her smash hit, The Tennessee Waltz, for an adoring audience. To the Tennessee Waltz. Hip! 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 Oh! Squash brain you, what are you doing? Take your duty. I'll pick at you in a minute. Go on, get gone. Go ahead. The Three Stooges had locals rolling in the aisles, and the Broadway touring shows continued. South Pacific, The Country Girl, Guys and Dolls, they all played at the Palace. In 1961, William Castle's classic schlock horror film, Homicidal, made its world premiere at the Palace in Youngstown. Excitement at Youngstown, Ohio. Swarms of customers descend on the box office of the Palace Theater as cash registers ring up record grosses. Homicidal's mixture of suspense plus showmanship add up to a picture with money written all over it. William Castle passes out certificates redeemable during a fright break for those too scared to see the suspenseful climax of homicidal. I think it was uh, much better than Psycho. I saw it. My husband did. Right. I agree. Mr. Castle, I'd like to congratulate you on a fell fine piece of production. I think uh, Alfred Hitchcock is going to have to go a long way to try and top something like this. Well, thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say. The Psycho-inspired picture and its gimmicky fright break brought national attention to the theater. An unfortunate series of events led to the untimely closure of the palace and ultimately its demolition in 1966. And lo and behold, there he is, Sean, Sean Posey. Posey. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being a part of Valley Spotlight. And what a story. Yeah. So many things that we didn't know, right, Michael? All, every time. And I love the old pictures and things like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of um, surreal to think that we were sitting right next to what was probably, some would say, one of the nicest theaters in the entire state of Ohio. Well, Frank Sinatra. Yeah, Glenn Miller, Al Jolson. The list goes on and on of people that came through here, right? They would yeah, know, right? Absolutely. They yeah. would know. And for people that want to get their hands on your book, if they want to know more, it's a great Christmas gift. It's a good gift all year round, I think. Absolutely. Tell them what's the name of it. Give them the name. Pitch it for us. Yeah. Historic Theaters of Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Uh, the whole theater history of the Mahoning Valley going back from the Warner Brothers all the way through yes. drive-in theaters. My and, look at all that work, I know. Michael. You can get it where? All over the place, online, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble's here in the Valley. Uh, Books A Million, Mill Creek Park Visitor Center, anywhere where you can think of that would possibly have books. Perfect. It does, you don't have to buy your dad another shirt. Look, it's all right here, you guys. All right, what do you say we uh, make some more cookies? You okay with that? Yeah, sure. I'd love to eat some too, if right. possible. Yeah. You're a very good pizza, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Mike or, Mike or Michael. I do. I do my best. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have that for you back in Pesto's Test Kitchen after this break. It's grand opening weekend at the Robbins Theater in downtown Warren. Thursday, January 9th, it's Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Friday, January 10th, Lisa Lampanelli's losing it. And Saturday, January 11th, we've got Firefall, Pure Prairie League, and Orleans. Get your tickets now at robinstheater.com. Looking for the best doggone deals on shoes or just looking for an excuse to get a new pair? Visit the Rack Room at Ryer Shoe Store. Unbelievable savings on thousands of pairs located in beautiful downtown Sharon. Worth the drive every time. Fetch a new pair of shoes today. Did you say we're going on a roller coaster this winter? Not a roller coaster, a polar coaster. The Farmer's Almanac is predicting a polar coaster with way more snow than average. DuCut can help you get ready for anything this winter. We've got complete selections of Honda and Toro snowblowers that can ride out this year's polar coaster. So let yourself go to DuCut. Let yourself go.
here in Pesto's test kitchen. We have been working. We have been. Oh, look at Mike itself. It's been working. You did a great yeah. job, Mike. I mean, you really you're nice job. You did, well, a very, you did a really good these, job. And try these lemon ones when you find the recipe. They're different and they're really good. So they are. Kudos to you. Thank kudos you. to the chef. Yes. Yeah. Hasn't very done squat so far. <laughs> All right, what else are you going to make us do? So today we're going to do uh, thumbprints. Okay. So, I mean, any. it's basically a sugar cookie dough, um, and then I added cream wrestle? cheese. So you could do oh, mascarpone oh, if you want to, or cream cheese to the to the dough. Okay. Um, so all you do, basically, you just cream Again, it. With so that you cream thing. your butter, your sugar, this you add your, your little little wedding ingredients. I've already pinched my finger. All <laughs> cookies are all about right measurements, and these are perfect for that. Baking is a science, Michael. Absolutely. It is not just you can wing it. It's right. all you science. Totally flunk you science. Just, did do you this? just tell Michael he can't wing something? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Roll it. It's okay. kind of like making buckeyes. Okay. You know, or like uh, snowballs. Okay. And then you just roll them, right. roll it into the sugar. It's all coming back to me. There you go. So, and then you can and then use you your get thumb a big fat grandpa to put your thumb in it, right? Yeah, or if you're like me, that's kind of, you know, not really. You cool. don't really do so, the thumb? No. So you just take, you could use your dowel that you used for, you know, your clothespins and just use the bottom of it, stick it in, yeah. um, and then find your favorite jelly that you like. Any kind of jelly that you what like. Are we this having? is a black cherry. Okay. So this is an almond okay. um, dough. Almond and cherries go very, very cherries. well together. And then you just fill it like that. Yeah. Put it in your oven for 350 mm -hmm. um, for about eight minutes. Are you all just cookies want it to get just a little brown, but not anything crazy. Are all cookies about 350? Around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So there's one thing that's I really like important, that yeah. though, you want to make sure that your oven's calibrated because if you have an uncalibrated oven, you can have very different cooking times and you can have uneven <laughs> oh, browning boy. and cooking times on your oven yeah. as well. All right. Okay. Go to the next That's one. That's perfect. Nice job right, on the close so pins, close Mark. Pins. Yeah, oh, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. All right. So I made the filling ahead of time because it's a lot of mixing. And basically all you do is mix um, sugar and butter. Mm -hmm. And then once that's really white and whipped and fluffy and sugar delicious, butter, baby. you add a, um, a cooked milk and flour. It's like a paste to it, almost like a pudding, with some marshmallow fluff. So that's all right. what you do with can that. Can you cut the tip of your thing off there? I got it. All right, so you add, put it in a, paste, a piping bag. It's so right. much easier. And then any any tip that you want, like a flowery tip Give it to or him. anything. Give it to him. We're going to sell them first. Uh, no. Kids might be watching that. and we right. and then we're then you're gonna, you, know, you know the marshmallow boy over there. He doesn't like. I didn't make my own fluff, so oh. I hope it's okay for you. Oh. I don't know if this is to my I don't like know. It, I you know. It could not be my standards. So I don't know. Come to the restaurant and get yourself a marshmallow. I've had them. They're delightful. Yeah. Okay. So right. we're going we're gonna to cut some biscottis now? Yep. Yeah, so we're doing that. But I'll work you, on this. Do you want to do this? Do you want to talk <laughs> you can do with this. some powdered sugar? Oh, God. If you don't have a sugar shaker, you can use a fancy colander. Why does this it have to go shed? through that sifter thing? Because well, it's so like nice crumbs. and powdered. Exactly. There are crumbs in the sugar? Well, yes. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. I didn't know. All right. Go ahead, so biscotti guy. I am going to cut these biscottis. Amanda baked this for about 300, at 350 degrees, 35 to 40 minutes. And you want to let it cool down after it comes out of the oven. So it just it's a very, very it's dense rich. log of biscotti dough. It and I'm going like to cut. It's from Outback. It does like look like it's from. Yeah. yeah. Well, I made you some bread. <laughs> so we're just going to cut these Ooh. about a half inch thick. And we're going to lay them back out on the tray because biscotti in Italian means what, my case? Twice baked. All right. Thank you. There we go. Mike with the good cue. Yeah. All right. So you just cut these out, and then we're going to bake them again, Amanda, for how long? We're going to bake them for about five minutes. About five yeah, minutes. You just want them to just get a little extra finish on them. Okay, great. Perfect. And again, we're using that fancy sill pad sheet, which you can buy from your favorite online supplier. They had great deals on Black Friday mm -hmm. and Cyber Monday. So they're very inexpensive now. And really, at cleanup time, you're really going to like that because it really saves you a lot of elbow grease. All right. Okay. Let's take our break. When we come back, we're going to make the cannoli shell. In the filling. And then we're going to fill the cannolis, mm -hmm. right? That sounds Absolutely. great. All right. Because who doesn't leave it like a cannoli? The What's the favorite line the from The Godfather? Take the gun. No, leave the gun. <laughs> Take, Take the gun. <laughs> It's grand opening weekend at the Robbins Theater in downtown Warren. Thursday, January 9th, it's Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Friday, January 10th, Lisa Lampanelli's losing it. And Saturday, January 11th, we've got Firefall, Pure Prairie League, and Orleans. Get your tickets now at robinstheater.com. As a real estate investor, I look for sharp agents who really know their market. Agents who do so much business, they can find me the right investment property and sell it for the most money without drama. When I need real estate advice in the Mahoning Valley, I call Kelly Warren. Her innovative marketing attracts hundreds of buyers every month, which creates more demand for your home, selling it faster and for more money. She guarantees to sell it on your timeline or she'll buy it. Call the agent I trust, Kelly Warren, and avoid the drama. 
Santa is here, and you know what that means. It's time for Operation Santa. This year, we're supporting our friends from the United Way. Help us celebrate 100 years in the Valley, making generations of impact. For every new Chevy, Buick, or GMC we sell now through December 31st, we'll make a $50 donation to the United Way. Every dollar stays in the Valley. Operation Santa, only at Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC. On Market Street in Boardman. <laughs> Sweeney. Our customers are always part of the equation of everything we try to do. We don't have a Hillcrest label that we're trying to push on you. We don't have stockholders we're trying to make profit for. There's no out-of-state corporate office. The competitive advantage for Hillcrest over our national competition really is sustainable pricing, number one, the service, and caring about what the customer needs, not our agenda. It's tough to get off course when that's your focus. Little quick culinary tip there, Ron. <laughs> take your chocolate, put it into a baggie, take your French rolling pin or your, your favorite rolling pin and just start chopping it up. And that'll break it up perfectly for the ends of the cannoli. All right, we are back. What are you working on there, Amanda? So we're making the cannolis. Yeah, the cannolis. we did the dough. The dough's made dough of these ingredients, made, yeah, correct? Flour, butter, um, egg, cin or cinnamon, nutmeg, brown sugar, salt, and then a little bit of a sweet marsala. So you can either do like a sweet Come white on. wine Come or, on. Um, or dry. So depending well, on what you like. Okay. Well, because cannolis come from Sicily. Mm -hmm. So w being from Sicily, marsala is produced in that area. Is. Well, thank okay, you, the fact Cecily. That she started those already. Our videographers are uh, our photographers here on set. Their faces that didn't work. are like that one didn't work. No, they're just like wow. How do I get that amazing, out? Amazing though. No, that'll be an open face one though. That'll be great. That's I still want to cut that off. I was gonna say, just put the cannoli on top of it, and I'm good to go. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. no. that's okay. That's okay. That's why we're here to show them. Okay, so sometimes you have failures. Or in the kitchen. Happy in the little kitchen. accidents. And I, like, life, I like to say happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. Yeah. So Amanda's going to, and that's that's 350 degree canola oil, uh, correct? Uh, 375. 375. 375. So that way we get those nice little crunchy little pockets that, that you have right here. Those little that bubbles. We need a little egg on there to yeah. stick it? Yep, yep, so we do. All right. All right, so you want to do a little bit of egg. And honestly, if you want to use your wind chimes to make these, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah, or yeah. maybe a pipe organ um, that you disassembled. You know? I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, or sometimes you could even just use foil. So you foil can make like stuff. a foil tube. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Okay. Once they're Good done, luck. Amanda, they come out nice and crunchy like out. this. Uh -huh. We've actually done those. We've done them. So then you take your favorite ricotta filling or mascarpone, whatever way you like to do your cannolis, and you pipe it in. And then what I like to do for me is I love pistachios and I love dark chocolate. So we're just going to dip the ends, one in chopped pistachios, one in chopped chocolate. We're going to put it over here. And then, you know, we want to make it fancy for our guests because we love being, you know, kicking that up a little bit. So I just take some oh, melted this, chocolate and we're just going to spray that over the top just like that. From a foot high. From a foot high. Well, you have got to get the good strands. You've got to get the good strands. So okay. that's why we do that. And then they come out like this. And look at those. Your guests are going to be blown away. Oh, the cannolis, once that chocolate dries, is going to be amazing. We got and look, one. Mike, pull it out. Is it done? Uh, no, it needs a few minutes. All right. Take that, seconds. little Italy. And then we know the best what we're doing. thing is, is that when you go to the dollar store and you're shopping for your kids' science yeah. projects. Whatever favorite store you want to go to, whether it's the dollar store or Ron's favorite Kmart, um, right. we come over here. Now we can build some boxes for our family and friends. So you can do the chocolate, biscottis. Amanda made some regular plain biscottis. You can put a couple of your favorite thumbprints, a couple of your favorite. I love those thumbprints. Oh my goodness, those are great. Yeah. Look at that, and you just build that, you give that to your friends, your family, and it's perfect. How do we do over there, boys and girls? Pretty good. Okay, Does it taste yeah. good? The, axe, the happy well, Mike, accident is still delicious. No, it's Mike, get the get real wine, get in I know, there. I shouldn't have worn the You're like our sweater. guinea pig. I know. What was yeah, that little kid on TV? Mikey likes it. There Mikey likes it, there we go. Yes, and? Oh, am I all right? Mikey likes it. Yeah, good one. Oh I'm going to go for a classic biscotti. Well, cheers, everybody. Cheers to you guys. Happy holidays. Merry ha Christmas. Bon Natal. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Some extra filling. And this, your favorite eggnog, your favorite coffee, anything to dip these cookies yeah, with, it's yes. perfect. Yeah, to you yeah. and your families, Merry Christmas from all of us. Uh, Patels are good, but I, I like the cannolis better. Shocking. I know. I don't know. I, I liked what he was doing there with the drizzling and all that stuff. They make it look so good and so easy, and I think I had two of them. I never even think of, well, anyways. So, 
<clears throat> and I like when you made that canister. <laughs> Take a few of those home. Yeah, we took a couple to go, that's for sure. Right. All right, let's keep eating good, shall we? Yes, we shall. All right, let's go to Sharon, Pennsylvania. Some of our good friends, Jim Landino and Jen Krasowski, Lulu Beans Cafe is one of our favorite places. And today, as part of our Perfectly Plated segment brought to us by Steel Light, we're going to show you the story behind the food, and we're going to dedicate this one to Jen. Oftentimes, what you see is what you get. But with Lulu Beans Cafe in Sharon, Pennsylvania, that simply is not the case. What you see is just the tip of the coffee cup, so to speak. So um, it took about six months for me to come up with a name for this place because we kept going back and forth. And I uh, wanted to use beans in the names. I thought with coffee beans and green beans, you know, kind of fit. So um, joking around, we had a dog named Lulu. and. So well, we agreed on that, so why don't we just call it Lulu Beans? And it was kind of a joke, but then I was like, oh, well, actually, that sounds kind of fun. And we wanted something fun and light, so that's uh, kind of how it happened. Lulu Beans Cafe is a labor of love between two people who found love and then realized their love for bringing life back to Sharon, PA. There's just an energy in Sharon, and we just really love it here. And um, we both had a passion for older buildings, and that's kind of... Um, what we were doing and we love coffee. Our first date was at a coffee shop and uh, we both love really good food. You know, I've been in the restaurant business since I was 17, you know, on and off through the years. And um, we just wanted to bring something else to Sharon that was, you know, kind of bright and fun and lively and had good food and good coffee. Um, you know, there's not a lot of places these days to eat really healthy, you know, in, in the whole area really. Um, so we wanted a place where, you know, I'm gluten free, dairy free and uh, to have some place we could offer that kind of food to, but you know, a lot of people don't think that tastes very good. So we wanted to say, yeah, it does. Like, this is good, this is healthy, and you know, so creating that in a good environment or a fun environment is, was really the goal. The building, the menu, the coffee, all of it speaks to Jen Krasowski's vision and strength. As she and her fiance, Jim Landino, were opening Lulu Beans Cafe, they received news no one wants to hear. Well, I was uh, diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, pretty aggressive one. Um, started chemotherapy last May 5th, um, went through and uh, finished up with radiation like the 22nd of January this year, I think. So um, it was about, you know, three months after we opened the restaurant. A fight with cancer proved to be the perfect outlet for Jen and Jim. That creative outlet, that part of Jen, is the part of Lulu Beans Cafe that ticks. It's part of her life and her menu in a big way. It's been a, it's been a tough road and eating healthy is a huge part of getting through illnesses and of all kinds, so, especially cancers. So it was very important and you know, having Lulu Beans was you know, definitely um, a huge help in the progression and uh, everything that I went through with that so and to know lulu beans cafe is to know that innovation exists and that strength and creativity goes right down to the plate which is quite perfect thanks to steel light international there's a lot of details when opening a restaurant to, to think about and uh, plating is definitely one but we have stairs here we have a split level which is um, pretty uncommon in a restaurant for you know for multiple reasons, but um, it was a cool building. We thought it was worth giving it a shot. So we wanted something. I wanted something that was light, um, lightweight for the kids to carry up and down the stairs, and um, you know, something that still looked really nice. And there's not a lot of um, melamine out there that you know doesn't kind of look like something you put on your patio. Uh, <laughs> so when I found uh, these plates through Steel Light, I was extremely excited because you know we also collect pottery and love potters, but. Um, it looks like it, a lot of people think it is, and I tell them it's melamine and they're completely shocked. So enjoy Lulu Beans Cafe, and when you walk in the door, know that it's more than just a perfectly plated experience. I had someone say that when they're having a bad day, they know they can come here and get something that they don't feel guilty about eating and get their spirits brightened by you know the color and the art and our staff and, and the food. So that's probably my you know favorite thing that I have heard, so yeah.
I think sometimes when you have a passion, then your mind shifts to that, mm -hmm. and you don't kind of worry what's going on in your life a little right. bit. Right. I can't speak for her, but that's what I was thinking when I was watching that. And we just continue uh, to wish them a lot of success, not mm -hmm. just with the fight with cancer, but of course, keeping Lulu Beans, you know, cafe innovative and awesome. So cool. And they have that burger night now. So good. Such good stuff. All right. Anyhow, when we come back, you would think a teacher would be perfect for the cash car. And she was. She did a good job. Our friend Kelly is going to join us in the cash car, a new friend, right? We that's like right. to make new friends. You'll see it after this break. The Hope Center for Arts and Technology, located in Sharon, offers free job training as part of their Medical Assistant Diploma Program. No cost to qualified students. Log on to HopeCat.org and click Apply Now. No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Looking for the best doggone deals on shoes or just looking for an excuse to get a new pair? Visit the Rack Room at Ryer's Shoe Store. Unbelievable savings on thousands of pairs located in beautiful downtown Sharon. Worth the drive every time. Fetch a new pair of shoes today. Sweet. All right, guys, welcome Everybody. to... <laughs> the cash car is a cash truck. This is Would a you, cash rig. Before we meet oh uh, Kelly, oh. and before Lauren slams into one of these beautiful cars in Sweeney, oh my goodness, uh, let's this... worry about the Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, shall we? This thing yeah. is, this is like a semi. HD means uh, heavy duty. There's 15 camera angles on this truck, which is 13 more than our whole show has. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> there's an uplift tailgate and it hauls stuff, and it's got a 10-speed transmission, and it's got a crew cab. How much room do you have back there, Kelly? Oh, I have lots of room. Oh my goodness. Do you hear that roar, you guys? Yeah, 10-speed transmission, so you can really gun it. Kelly, tell us about yourself a little bit, okay? Hi, Kel. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you both. I said I followed you guys until you left. It's kind of disappointing, but I'm so honored to meet both of you. This is exciting. Um, born and raised in Camel, uh -huh. Ohio all my life. Um, I teach in Camel City Schools. Nice. It's my 27th year. I teach middle wow. school, fifth grade language arts. And were you guys, were you like, all right, bus pickup, see you later, and you <laughs> scooted out of school and came back? No, back with us? I get out at like 2.40, so I just waited and then left after. Um, Very good. Boy, you look so natural in this thing. Do I look Doesn't good? Doesn't she? Yeah, you do. I'd be scooted all the way up. Yeah. This, got this reminds, ways. reminds me of my days in Missouri, Michael. Driving a truck? University of Missouri. Are you prepared for a trivia? No, I'm nervous. I'm well, we cranked up the heat in here just for, for the radio. Yeah, it's a little warm. Look at all these. It's this is high, amazing. OK, your category Beautiful. today is snow and winter. All right, I have six questions. At any time, you can use one pass, OK? Every question you get right is 50 bucks. You can win up to $250. Or what else could she win? Or a thousand dollar incentive to buy courtesy of Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC. Okay. So what are you doing? Are you what ready? do you want to do, lady? Ready. You going for the money or the I'm incentive? Going for the money. She's going for the money. All right, here we go. Sounds good. Question number one. Now I found out earlier she was not a football fan. So she may not get this, but she might. That's okay, she's got a free pass. All snowflakes have this number of sides. It's also the same number of Super Bowl wins for the Steelers. All snowflakes have the same number of sides. How many are there? Six. That's correct. Wow! Oh, nobody gets that one. It's a good one. All right, this is a big one for a teacher. $50, ding, 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 by the way. Um, this is the coldest country on earth in the winter. It's also the world's largest country. What is it? Is not a country. So pick again. Oh, well. It's got to be a country. <laughs> okay. We can't accept Antarctica. It's a continent. That Alaska. Is. Alaska, also not a country. That is not a country. All right. Sorry. Incorrect. Russia. State. Russia. Russia oh, I was never the got that one. country we were looking for. Okay. So you got That's 50 okay. bucks so far. If it's winter in Ohio in December, what's the season in Australia in December? Summer. That's correct. Nice job. Nice job. So We're good. Turn around in this little neighborhood right here, guys. You feel that? I do. That is safe. She's up to 100 bucks. You still have your pass. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Nice. This winter-themed movie stars Anna, Elsa, and Olaf, and made over a billion dollars. Frozen. That's correct. Ding, 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 bucks. ding. 
150 bucks. I love it. Yay. All right, here's one for you. Uh, for, for me? Don't answer, but okay. it's for you. I'll keep my mouth shut, Kel. I'll okay. do my best. Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. <laughs> this is the same, oh, I'm sorry. This is the name of the two days of the year where day and night are the same length. And it's also a cool Chevy SUV. Equinox. Yes, or Equinox. We would accept it both. That works. And that is your five questions. $200. Do you want one more to make it an even 250 Yeah, sure. Lauren, your thoughts? Sounds good. Oh my gosh, wait. Let's turn this Let's baby around. Let's check this turning radius Hold before we do it. Oh, I would jump the curb right now. No, just go right up in the guy's yard. No, I'm not going to go in the guy's yard. Okay. Like. Last question. These are some nice houses. Wow. Mm -hmm. These are nice. The largest snowfall ever recorded in, a, in one 24 hour period was in this mile high state in 1921. Colorado? What's the name of the state? That's it! Nice job, Kelly! You are a big winner. Uh -huh. I was listening to your clues. Yes, very good. <laughs> He's a good question writer, isn't he? He is. I because know. if you didn't, if you were listening, I was We like, took our question of the day days very seriously back at the did. station, didn't it's we, Michael? very important uh -huh. to us. But I was embarrassed. What a teacher mean when you kept saying country. Yes. I think I was just so nervous. And right. I knew I wasn't focusing on, so I was thinking of cold. I was listening mm -hmm. there really great. So mm -hmm. my students listening. And I'm like, yeah, that was a state. Yeah, there wouldn't be a country. Maybe your students won't see that part. Yeah, but I, I'm sure somebody will see that part. <laughs> All right, you ready to head back to the dealership? Yes. Okay, where is it located, Lauren? On Market Street in, in Boardman. Boardman. Nice job, Kelly. Hey. Good for her. We like giving away money, and if you want to ride in the Sweeney Cash Car, just log on to our website, valleyspotlight.com backslash cash car. Register to win. We have a good time. Every time. Every time is a good time. All right, that's the show for this week. Who knew you could cook with a light bulb? You can. Yeah, and they did <laughs> back in the day. I know I did. Bye. Kenner's Betty Crocker Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven. Preheat 15 minutes, light bulb not included. Here's what you can make in an Easy Bake, an Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven. Chocolate and the yellow cake in an Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven. Pour in the mix, it's lots of fun. Bake 10 minutes till it's nice and done. You can ice the cake that you bake in an Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven. Delicious! Betty Crocker Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven with Betty Crocker Mixes from Kenner. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.